Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Early. I am a web designer and I also do various other types of uh, work like photography, graphic design, logo design, illustration, animation, all that. Um, but in this talk, I'm going to focus on how you can sell yourself as a photographer. So this talk is titled, Make Them Want You, Tips on How to Create a Desirable Photography Portfolio. Um, so I'm just going to go over a few things on how to really capture uh, those web visitors and turn them into paying customers. So the first thing is to keep it simple. So you may have heard this before. Um, I come from, I guess, the philosophy that the less that you have, the more impact each of those things can have. So less is more. Um, so the less they have to absorb, the more they can focus. So think about it in terms of if you're walking down a busy city street, let's say you're in Manhattan during uh, maybe New Year's or you know the holidays, um, you're going to see flashing signs, there's going to be uh, cars zooming past, there's, the sidewalks are going to be packed with pedestrians and bicyclists, and there's going to be all sorts of noise and street musicians, so many different things to focus on. Uh, this can really create a sense of chaos and unease, and it really makes it difficult to focus on any particular task. So if you think of design in the same way, you know, if you go to a website that has flashing banner ads and, you know, blinking text and animations and like all sorts of different elements on there, uh, you're sort of going to get paralyzed and you're not really going to be able to think of the next step as easily. Um, so you really want to just eliminate all the clutter and focus on the necessities. Um, so really deliver everything in bite-sized pieces. So don't give them too much to chew on at once. A lot of times people make the mistake of thinking, all right, I want to have, uh, give my uh, viewer access to everything and I want to explain everything on the site and just uh, make it super content rich. And I mean, having a lot of content is great, but you want to organize it in a way that they, it doesn't get just dumped on them all at once. Um, so one way you can do that is just take advantage of scrolling. So don't be afraid to lead the viewer down the page one piece at a time. So especially with uh, tablets and mobile devices, uh, they just make it really easy to just you know slide along uh, the page. Um, so this can be a really great way to just give them uh, your content and your information one piece at a time. Um, and also you want to make your work the focal point. So don't make the site itself a distraction from your work. So a lot of times people will put all sorts of widgets and gadgets on their website thinking it's going to make their site look really cool when really it's just giving people more things to focus on and it's going to distract them from your actual work, which is what you're trying to sell. So be consistent. Um, so you don't want to have too many types of photography or too many styles uh, on your website at once. Uh, you want to cater to a specific audience. So just think of it in terms of what your customers might be searching for. Um, so a lot of times people will want to get uh, senior portraits taken or engagement photos or wedding photos or pictures of their children. Um, so you may want to just cater to those specific audiences. Or um, if you do have all those different types, break them up into categories on your website. Don't try to intermix all these different types in your website. Uh, especially you don't want to intermix you know, portrait or landscape photography together. Uh, you want to kind of keep those separate. So think about what type of photography for you are, what is your style, and really concentrate on that on your website. Uh, next, branding is key. Um, so branding is as much about leaving out as it is including. So what is branding? Um, a lot of you might have heard that term thrown around. Uh, it basically has to do with what is the personality or the emotion that a certain company or person, uh, I guess, gives off. So if you think of it in terms of Nike, uh, Nike is trying to appeal to athletic people, people there into, you know, sports and running and jogging. Um, so they're not trying to include everybody. They're they're really targeted on a specific audience. So everything is all about, you know, athleticism and, you know, sports and all that. 
Um, so really just think about what is your brand? You know, what is your personality? Um, do you try to appeal more to romantic side of people with, you know, um, couples photos or weddings? Or do you do more sports photography or do you take pictures at concerts? Really think about all those things and that is kind of your brand. Um, and in coming up with a brand, you'll want to know basic color theory. Um, so as photographers, you probably already have a good sense of color. Um, now you just want that to carry over into your design. So use a consistent, uh, limited, harmonious color palette. So I typically tell people not to use more than three or four colors max in your color palette. Um, so usually the less colors you have, the more you're going to be identifiable. So think about McDonald's. What are their colors? Red and yellow. Ikea, blue and yellow. You know, um, Target, white and red. So you don't really have to think about it too long, but you can associate certain colors with a certain company. So that really plays into your brand as well. Um, another thing is focus on texture. So like if you are into taking photos of concerts or extreme sports or things like that, you might have a more gritty, edgy look. So you might want to have some, you know, tarnish or grunge or maybe kind of a concrete background texture. Uh, whereas maybe if you're more into fashion or taking um, interior photos, you might want to have a more sleek, minimalistic um, style. Or if you're into wedding photography, you might have a more romantic um, sense. So maybe have flowers or silky textures, um, more lacy things, maybe more cursive, you know, that type of thing. Um, and so the colors, like I mentioned earlier, you know, you may want to adjust, you know, the vibrance or the saturation uh, depending on, you know, do you take more black and white photography? Are your photos more, you know, vibrant and saturated? Um, so really have your design colors match the colors in your photography. And then typeface. Just like colors, you want to keep more limited. I tell people to limit their number of typefaces to three or less. Uh, and also the layout. How are you going to be presenting your work? Do you want more of a mosaic of your photos? Do you want like a grid or do you want to hit people with just a giant photo slideshow at the very beginning? Um, that's another thing to think about with your branding. So call to action. <clears throat> so you might have a really great looking website and you may really have your customers wanting to hire you. The next thing is to make it easy for them to take that next step. So they want you, now let them have you. Um, so you definitely want to make your contact info prominent. Uh, your visitors shouldn't have to dig through all your pages or scroll to find a way to contact you. I typically like to put this in the very top right corner of the site. So although you want it to be prominent, you don't want it to be obnoxious. Uh, you want your call to action to be easy to find, not hard to ignore. So I had a guy once tell me that you want to you know, poke them in the eye with your message um, and get their attention. And I personally disagree with this. I think you want to shine a spotlight on something to make it uh, obvious and desirable. You don't want to shine a spotlight in people's eyes. So don't get too carried away with how prominent you make things. Uh, and you want to be SEO aware. Some people might be wondering, what is SEO? SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. Uh, this is how does your site stack up in Google or whatever search engine you use in terms of the results. So let's say you search for photographer San Francisco. If you are a photographer in San Francisco, where do you land in those results? Are you on the fifth page or are you number five in the result or are you the very first one? That is how well your site is in terms of SEO. So one way to really boost your SEO ranking is to use the words your customers are going to be searching for. So like I said, if you're in San Francisco and you're looking for a photographer, you want to make sure you have those search words um, or phrases in your website. Uh, that's going to make a huge result or a huge difference in your search results. Um, the other major factor that Google um, ranks your site based on is how many links you have going to your site and how uh, authoritative those links are. So 
if you have a really popular authoritative site, um, like let's say like lynda.com or something, or uh, Gawker or NPR or something, if they link to your site, that's going to be huge in terms of boosting your results. Or if you have hundreds or thousands of people and bloggers linking to your site, that's also going to be helping your results quite a bit. Uh, one really easy way to link to your site, get those results up, is to use social media. So uh, I definitely recommend setting up a Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn account with your website and have all of those interlink with each other. Uh, next thing is to go mobile. So smartphone traffic is the fastest growing um, web audience out there. So you definitely want to cater to them. So if you do have a website, be sure to test it out on a mobile device. So um, go to your phone or go to your website on your iPhone and you may be surprised how it displays if it's not optimized. Um, since you know phones have such small screens, text that might be legible on a desktop may be super tiny on your phone. So you want to have an optimized site um, that will work for phones. One uh, really trendy way to do that is by using responsive layouts. And this basically means uh, your site is going to look good no matter what the screen size is. So this is, uh, there's special coding that's involved in doing this, uh, but it's going to make it good, look good whether you're on a desktop or on a tablet or on a phone. It's going to basically create a unique layout on all of those. And you also want to avoid flash. I'm going to get into this more on the next slide, but basically flash is a technology um, that was developed over a decade ago that was used to you know, have animated features on a website, but unfortunately there's quite a few problems with this. One of the main ones being that it doesn't work on most mobile devices. So avoid Flash. So Flash is kind of old school and it's not really mobile friendly. Um, and when the iPad came out, this was kind of a topic of debate um, and a lot of controversy because the iPad did not support Flash content, and at that time, there was you know maybe hundreds of thousands of websites that used Flash, and all of those sites uh, that had Flash um, would just have either white or gray boxes wherever that Flash content was. So some sites are entirely Flash-based. So if you go to those sites on your iPad, those would just show up as just a blank screen. So you definitely want to avoid uh, having that happen. Also, Flash is closed, so this means if you want to edit any of your Flash content, this actually requires you having a copy of the Flash software, which um, I haven't checked the price recently, but it can be hundreds of dollars or even over a thousand dollars. So that's definitely an issue to think about. And it's not SEO friendly. So this means that the search engines actually cannot go through your Flash content and index the words that are being used in there uh, for their search engines. So that's going to actually hurt your results. Um, so how can you tell if something is Flash or not? Usually if you're on a desktop and you right-click on it, uh, you're going to have a right-click menu that's quite a bit different from any other site. Uh, you're typically going to see somewhere in there it's going to say something about Adobe Flash. So that's how you know. Uh, if you're on a mobile device, you'll know it's Flash because it doesn't show up or you'll get some sort of warning about installing the Flash plugin. Um, so customer point of view is very important. Um, so think of yourself from the perspective of your customers. How do they see you? Um, think about their interaction from start to finish. So from the time that they search for your site, they find it, they get on there, to the point that they're actually hiring you, and then to the very end when you're getting your money and you've given them their prints. Uh, how is the customer's experience going to be with you? Um, so this is where thinking like an entrepreneur is really important. Uh, a lot of people that go to art school or photography school or self-taught or hobbyists, they really focus on their craft and that's great. You really want to have a great product, but you're always going to be a hobbyist until you can make a living off of your work. So this is where you have to kind of have some sense of pricing and managing your customers' expectations. Um, so really think about things like pricing, expectations, scheduling, billing, prints, and the shoot, all of that. Just the same way you would think about maybe if you go to 
um, Burger King or Subway, uh, you stand in the line, you give them your order, you get your food, you get your price ticket, you eat the food, you're in the restaurant. Um, there's all these different factors that affect how your experience is. So examine yourself from an outsider's perspective. So you may even have a friend or someone be a guinea pig, be like, okay, you're going to be my customer. Um, we're, you're going to hire me. You're going to tell me what you want. Um, I'm going to do the shoot. We're going to you know, work through the scheduling and the billing. Uh, I'm going to give you your photos, and you're going to pay me my money. And then just have them evaluate you and what their experience was like. Um, and so... One factor to think about is whether or not to include price. And I think that's kind of up for debate. I've seen it done both ways. So a few things to think about. Um, you want to avoid sticker shock. So a lot of people may not have hired a photographer before. So when they go on your site and they see that you're charging a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars, they may be like, whoa, you know, that's, that's definitely not worth it. Or I wasn't expecting that. Um, so... Typically, it's best to just get them to contact you and then talk with them and kind of sell yourself and explain what makes you special, um, sort of build up a rapport with them and get them emotionally invested uh, before you start talking about price. Because at that point, they're going to be a little bit more comfortable with spending money on you if they know it's going to be worth it. Um, whereas if the price is one of the first things they see, they don't really have that trust established with you. Um, and so you know, you don't have as much leverage. <clears throat> the other thing is people are going to be comparing your price with other photographers that they see in the search results. Uh, so another photographer may be $50 cheaper than you, and they, that may be, end up being the factor that leads them to getting the business over you. So that might be another reason why you don't want to have price. However, there are different customers in different markets. You have some people that are in the market for high quality, high cost uh, photography. Uh, I've seen some photographers charge thousands of dollars for their prints or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars for photo shoots. Um, so your customer might be in that market. There might be other customers, maybe just uh, seniors wanting to get portraits that you know they may only have a couple hundred dollars in their budget. So. Uh, it all depends on who you're going after. Also, it may help manage their expectations. So if they can go onto your site and they can see, okay, this is how much it costs for a one-hour shoot versus a two-hour shoot. This is how much your prints cost. It might help them you know, uh, along the process uh, in just kind of measuring you up and thinking about what the next, next steps are. So those are all things to think about. So we talked about what makes a good website. Now how do you go about setting it up? Well, there's a few different ways you can do that. Uh, one is by going through a template service. So there's a lot of services out there where they make it easy to just log in, create an account, and uh, purchase one of their templates, and they're going to handle everything with you know, giving you a URL and uh, hosting it and managing all the technical sides. And a lot of these sites can be great. Um, some downsides, just depending on what the services are, is they can really limit uh, your creativity in terms of what content you have on your site or how, you're, how you manage your branding or what colors you use or how the photos are displayed. Uh, some of them might be flash-based services. Um, so those are all things to think about. So you kind of do get what you pay for. Um, but this can be a pretty quick, cheap way to get started. Uh, WordPress is probably the most popular option. Uh, this WordPress is basically a content management system for bloggers, and they actually have two different platforms. They have one platform where you can go onto their site, WordPress.com, and you host with them, and then they kind of uh, can charge you on a monthly or per plugin basis, and that's how they do their pricing. The other platform is to go to WordPress.org, and you can actually download the WordPress content management system and upload it to your own server, and you can customize every single line of code in there. Uh, and that's actually a really popular uh, choice. Now, it does make it easy in terms of, you know, you don't have to know any coding um, 
to set up a WordPress site, but it can be pretty involved in terms of you know purchasing a domain name, uh, purchasing web hosting, getting those connected, uh, uploading the WordPress uh, CMS to your hosting, and then you know getting the theme set up, and then managing all that. It can be pretty involved, um, so that's the downside to that. Uh, you can do it yourself. You can learn web design. Uh, you can design your site. You can code it out. You can get the hosting and the domain registry and do all that stuff yourself. Uh, but just from personal experience, I know that that is a very time-consuming process. Um, I've devoted you know several years of my life to web design, so by now, I mean, I can set that up pretty quickly. But I remember the first time I set up a WordPress site or the first time I set up hosting or the first time I coded a site, uh, it was a very tough learning experience. Um, and I am, I, I would consider myself more technically minded. Um, I've taught web design uh, for several years now, and just based on my students' experiences, some people can really struggle with this who are great artists or great designers or great photographers. So this may be a little bit harder than you think, um, depending on, uh, I guess, how quickly you pick this type of thing up. So the last option um, I would recommend is just hiring a designer. Um, so as a designer, you know, they are focusing, you know, all their time and their years on perfecting their craft, just like you're spending time uh, and energy on perfecting your craft as a photographer. So um, for me, I mean, I know that I kind of specialize in web design and a few other things, but oftentimes if I'm doing something like maybe designing a logo, even though I know that I can design a logo, sometimes I just don't have the time or the energy uh, to design a logo at a per certain time. Or if I just need photography, I mean, I have lighting setups, I have a camera and all that, but sometimes it's just cheaper and easier uh, to get stock photography. So, you know, you don't want to overstretch yourself because as a photographer, you have so many things to think about. You have to think about buying your equipment, you know, managing clients, managing prices, um, setting up shoots. There's a lot of things to think about. So by having to manage a website yourself or design or build a website, that's another thing to add um, to you. So if you can have a website that has great design, um, it's branded to match, you know, your business and your personality, uh, it's easy for people to find in search engines, uh, it can quickly pay for itself. Uh, as you start bringing in all those photography jobs. Um, so as a web designer, I'd like to thank you, and I'd also like to encourage you to you know, visit my portfolio at jonathanearly.com, uh, which includes uh, my entire range of work from logo design to photography to web design and animation, or also visiting joust.co. That's my business that's specifically catered to doing web design. Um, so thank you for watching, and... I guess good luck with your photography and your businesses, and I guess I'll see you at the, new, the next tutorial.